cool does that sound? You're like floating through this rhythmic landscape where you kind of know what it is, but you don't really know what it is. And those are my favorite things, not only to play, but to hear other drummers play. And I cannot wait to break this thing down for you. What's up, YouTubers? Hope you guys are doing absolutely fantastic. And I know that I said in my last video, this was gonna be my last video of 2020, but I was just sitting on the kit today playing. And this is an idea that I play all the time. You've probably heard it in my drumming before but I've never really been able to explain what makes it what it is because if I just broke it down for you and said, ah, oh, it's just fives is triplets. Well, it's not. There's another piece of the puzzle that has to be added to make this whole thing complete. And as I was just jamming today on the kit, it hit me what it really was. And when that happened, I then I was like, I have to grab my camera. I, I have to make a video about this. Now, the only thing I wanna mention before I jump on the kit and break this thing down for you is that if you haven't listened to my new podcast with Eddie Thrower, it's called Drum with Mike and Eddie, please do. We're 17 episodes deep. So if you need something to binge, it's really a podcast about life and the things in life like imposter syndrome, creativity, motivation, inspiration, it's all the things going on around our lives that actually affect our drumming. And so if you wanna to listen to it, I would love that. The link is in the description below. But now let's jump on the kit and figure this thing out. All right, so unfortunately we do have to get a little bit of music theory out of the way. So even if you're someone that's kind of new to the drums, you're like, ah, uh, this is too much math, just hang in there. Like the more you hear this stuff and the more that you're exposed to this stuff, the more it will make sense over time, especially if you're paying attention and just trying to figure it out. Okay, so we have one bar of 16th note triplets. One, two, three, four, five, six, two, two, three, four, five, six, three, two, three, four, five, six, four, two, three, four, five, six. And we're gonna divide that up into groupings of fives and one four. So we're gonna have four fives and one four. I know it's already getting confusing, but it's really not that bad. Our five is right, left, right, left, left. So we're gonna do that four times in a row. One, two, three, four, five, two, two, three, four, five, three, two, three, four, five, four, two, three, four, five. And then we have four singles to get out of it. One, two, three, four. That gives us a total of 24 notes. So we're taking this thing that was supposed to be four groups of six. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two. And we're just breaking them and saying, no, 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 let's do five, 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 four. It's still 24 notes and it gives us this very cool sound. Now, real quick. Just because I'm doing fives does not mean that I'm doing quintuplets. Quintuplets are a subdivision. They are five notes per pulse. So when you have a pulse like this, you're evenly spacing, equidistant notes, you're evenly spacing five notes. One e and daga, two e and daga, three e and daga, four e and daga, hippopotamus, David Letterman. That's not what we're doing. We're doing one and a one and a two and a two and a one, two, three, four, five, six, two, two, three, four, five, six. And we're breaking that up into five, 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 four. So once again, our five is right, left, right, left, left. We need to get used to that against the pulse. So let's give that a shot. Right, left, right, left, left as 16th note triplets. Now, if you're somebody that's been playing for maybe one, two, three, five years, or somebody that's been playing for a really long time and not practicing a lot, you shouldn't be worried about this or you shouldn't even be working on this. This is a pretty advanced concept to take an odd grouping like a five and force it into the subdivision of triplets or 16th note triplets. That's a big thing to do. And then to try to make that thing sound smooth, that's even tougher. And that's where I got stumped when I first started working on this. When I first started working on this, I figured out the math. I'm like, oh, I can do four fives and a four and get out of this and it'll be a one bar fill. And I did it and it didn't sound good. And it was stale, it sounded like math because it was math. And then like I said, when I was playing earlier today, I was like, oh, you know what? The reason I never teach this is because I always forget that when I use it, I have a very specific accent pattern that makes this thing sound much more musical. So we have four fives that we're dealing with. Each five gets its own little treatment to the dynamics. So let's go through it one at a time. Five number one, that's a really confusing. The first five. Okay, so that's our normal five, right, left, right, left, left. The second one, you accent right, left, and then come down for right, left, left. So it's right, left, right, left, left, right, left, right, left, left. So out of the five notes, you're accenting the first two.
On the third five, we accent the first three notes, which are all the singles, and then just ghost the double. And on the last five, we just do the same thing we did the first time, right, left, right, left, left, accenting the first two rights. I don't need to play that for you because you've already heard it. Then we get to the last four single strokes, and that is just all accents or a gradual crescendo. So if we put it all together, it sounds like this. So all we've done is put a little bit of spice on the dynamics and now the whole thing sounds so much better and it has a flow to it. And it doesn't sound like, hey, guess what? I'm doing fives and triplets. It doesn't sound stale and mathematical. I don't know if that was a stale voice, but it was the best I could do in the moment. But like I said, it has that thing where it's almost familiar to the listener or familiar to you and you go like, I know what that is, but I don't know what that is. And that's such a cool thing. So then the next step is to experiment with orchestration. Now, as far as goal tempo, I would say probably 100 BPM is as fast as you want to go, even though you might be able to physically go faster. What happens around 105, 110, 120 is the notes get so crushed together that the idea and the concept and the musical phrase starts to lose its shape. So I'd say 100 is pushing it. So I'm going to just mess around with it, trading fills at 100 and just trying to move that orchestration around and have as much freedom as possible. And I hope you enjoy it. All right, YouTubers, that is officially my last lesson of 2020. Thank you guys so much for being a part of the channel. Thank you guys for subscribing whenever you did, whether it was a decade ago or a day ago. I appreciate it, and I do not take it for granted. Thank you guys so much. I hope you have an amazing, amazing, and safe new year, and I will see you guys in the next one.